Well, I mean, we did kill a Karn. Opponent goes to 10. Shoot down the Karn. Pass the turn. Oh, all right. What do they got? <laughs> oh, we're fighting. We're fighting the good fight against the infinite mana deck. Opponent taps their liquid metal coating to send a message, I guess. Untaps. Need some new Zendikar Rising cards? You can get them today from our sponsor, Card Kingdom. Just head over to cardkingdom.com. Hello, everyone. <laughs> it's Seth, probably better known as Saffron Olive. And it's time for another edition of Much A Brew About Nothing. And who are we playing a Jakey Tribe this week? We are heading to Modern to play Core Tribal. That's right, Core Tribal and Modern. This list took Guardian Shield to a 5-0 finish in a League of Magic Online. And as soon as I saw, it was literal, actual Core tribal i knew we had to try it in z because core really they're like a half a step above kith kid and maybe like a step above skeletons in terms of tribe but they've got a bunch of new additions lately that really power up the deck they got some sweet tricks with equipment so we're gonna see can core tribal actually work in modern is the deck actually competitive let's find out on this week's bunch of brew about nothing so core tribal we often talk about the competitive advantage of tribes what do tribes do better than anything else well core are an equipment tribe they might be the best equipment tribe even their lord armament master is only really a lord if it's equipped two mana two two it pumps our other core plus two plus two for each equipment on it so if we load it up with an equipment or two it makes the rest of our team really big and it's not just armament master really looking at the corridor deck stoneforge mystic happens to be a core tutoring up equipment putting them into play one of our new additions at Kiri fears voyager draws us cards when we attack with equipped creatures and protects our equipped creatures core outfitter can equip stuff for free so we have a ton of core they care about equipment and as a result we got a bunch of equipment to go with our core banner skull combos with stoneforge mystic tutor it up put it into play on turn three get the big life linker can always bounce it back to our hand put it back into play if something goes wrong sword of fire dice for protection a card draw in damage maul the skyclaves quickly rising up my ranks of best syndicate rising cards it's just so aggressive sending our creature to the air equipping for free getting in a big attack shadow sphere for some life link and for some evasion with trample so that's our equipment and these equipment they're really good in our deck they are equipping to our armament master to pump the rest of our team they're being found with Stoneforge Mystic. They're drawing us cards and protecting yourself with a Kiri. They're equipping for free with Core Outfitter, so there's a ton of synergies in our deck. We're not a Stoneforge deck, even though we are a Stoneforge deck, but really we're a tribal deck. It just happens to be that most of our core tribal members really care about equipment, so we got all these equipment to support them. As far as the rest of our core, Giver of Roots protects our better creatures. Skyclave Apparition, another new addition, really powerful removal core. And then Core Firewalker, a little hit or miss. It's like never horrible. A 2-2 two, two for 2 can wear equipment. It dodges lightning bolt all the time. But it's absurd if we run into like straight up bird decks or other like mono red blitz decks that are all about the lightning bolt to cast each bread spells. Protection for bread and the life gain just kind of wins those matchups all by itself. So hopefully we run into some of those and you steal some free wins. Otherwise, Ether Vial to cheat our core to play lightning bolt for removal and damage mana base pretty straightforward cavern to fight through counters sunbait canyon some card draw a bunch of mana fixing stuff in the sideboard path to exile bone crusher giant for more removal devout lightcaster really sweet core tech against the death shadow deck three mana two two pro black and when it comes into play you get to exile black permanent so this gets rid of death shadow it gets rid of scourge of the sky claves it can snag like liliana's against jun so kind of a weird card to have in our deck but we're often violating to three and we care about core nahiri air of the agents makes core and is really good in grinding matchups giving us a steady stream of tokens to fight with some card advantage bridge and forge gender for protection against red base stacks we had a ton of that with core firewalker too rest in peace crafting cage for graveyard and that is core tribal core tribal for modern and that's our bunch of brew deck for this week so let's jump into a league see if core I don't know, like maybe this weird pile of strange creature types and equipment can actually compete in the format. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoy the gameplay and I'll be back in a bit with a wrap up. All right, much brew about nothing time. We are <laughs> playing a tribe that is roughly the power of Kithkin in modern, <laughs> which is which is core. We are core tribaling somehow, some way in the modern format. Uh, eh? I mean, we got a Kiri now. There's, there's somewhat good core. <laughs> Maybe it's, oh my god, it's Tron. I swear this deck needs Blood Moon. 
Uh, well, we'll grab a sacred foundry. Untap. Uh, booted. Passes. We draw the turn two vial. Classic, classic core top deck, I would say. Stoneforge Mystic. Grab a... Eh, yeah, sort of fire and ice, I guess. The problem is, like, if our opponent just plays Tron, how do we win? I don't think we do. I think we're just, like, dead. And I think that remains true even after sideboarding. I just, I don't think we have an answer for it. Or is this power plant? And... I mean, we won the die roll, even. We won the die roll around the play, but I feel like we're just drawing dead to Tron. Play the land. Play Aether Vile. So we get to pass the turn to put a batter skull into play, which is kind of powerful. Is it as powerful as a seven mana planeswalker, though? That's the real question. Opponent. Do they have Tron? They do. All right. And uh, we scoop it up. <laughs> Karn the Great Creator. Ticks down for something. I mean, our opponent just has infinite mana for the rest of the game, though. Liquid Metal Coding. Plays it. Well, we will put Batter Skull into play. And Expedition Map. All right. Well, opponent passes. I mean, none of this beats a... Uh, none of this beats Tron, though. Oh, uh, I forgot how much I hate Tron. Opponent in the Tron tank. Yeah, 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 opponent. Would you like to pass the turn one of these days? Huh. All right. I think opponent's trying to uh, set a record for being the slowest Tron player on Moto. And they might be succeeding. All right, opponent. Second main phase. Can we do it? Can we get to our turn, opponent? Can we do it? Wait. End step, stop, set. Oh, one more click. One more click. We're almost there. I know you want to break your record, opponent, but please. Pass the turn. All right, opponent. Got there eventually with the turn passing. Okay. And going to target one of our lands, so we will lightning bolt the Karn. Yep. Take up the vial. Oh, goodness, opponent. Okay, upkeep stops that. Upkeep stops that. Upkeep stops that. Oh, opponent, you can do it. Let's go. Let's go to uh, the main phase. There we go. All right, so we will play Akiri. We will go to combat. We will attack our opponent. Fighting a battle that I don't think we can win, but we gotta try. Skyclave Apparition. That would be good if our opponent's deck wasn't filled with things that cost 70 and 10 mana. Put on untaps. Do they have something that makes us concede? Do they time out? That's the other question. So far, we have played for 1 minute and 11 seconds. Our opponent's up to uh, 4 minutes and 35 seconds. So they're playing at 1-4 one, one speed. Like, if you set... If you set YouTube to one four speed and you hear like the the drunken low voice, it doesn't make any sense. That's that's uh that's our opponent's moto pace. <laughs> Either that or we're playing X four speed and the chickmunk voice. <laughs> oh, opponent, what you got? I mean, you got seven mana. You win the game. Just do it. Do it. I dare you. <laughs> do it. <laughs> okay, opponent seems to be considering. The possibility of cracking Expedition Map. Change their mind. <laughs> Another minute has run off the clock. I mean, the thing is, it doesn't matter, because Trod wins so quickly that our opponent could, could take a minute on each decision. Then they just slam a car and we scoop anyway. <laughs> so, so they are unlikely to be punished. All right. Opponent plays a snow-covered forest. They ancient stirrings. Can they find a card? Can they find a herb coil? Can they find any busted thing? The answer is... It is a Tron land. Opponent. Had the car in the whole dang time. Okay. So. What are we doing with Karn? Going to exile the Batter Skull. Uh, it. Passes. We draw. Why don't we take up Aether Vial? Mountain, play Sword of Fire and Ice. Equip Sword of Fire and Ice. Go to combat. Hit our opponent. Hit Karn. Draw a card. Well, I mean, we did kill a Karn. Opponent goes to 10. Shoot down the Karn. Pass the turn. Oh, all right. What do they got? <laughs> oh, we're fighting. We're fighting the good fight. Against the infinite mana deck, opponent taps their liquid metal coating to send a message, I guess. Untaps. They made that decision quickly. Tower. Infinite mana. 
Actually, 11. 11 mana means they have Ulamog the Ceaseless Hunger. Sword of Fire and Ice in Akiri. Well, okay. We did want those permanents. Opponent. Passes. Well, Ether Vile. Armament Master. Untap. So we Vile Stone Forge. We cast Stone Forge. All right, let's take up Stone Forge Mystic. Well, it's all going to come down to what our opponent has next turn. Maul the Skyclave. Maul on Armament Master. Hit our opponent. Well, I mean, do they have another Ulamog? Do they have an Ugin? There are many things that still make us die here. Potent. Untaps. We can take this Ulamog hit. But does our opponent have something else to go with it? If they do, it's game. If not, we fought through. Opponent going to crack expedition map. Okay. I don't think there's anything they can get with this that matters. Gets another tower. So even more mana. And taps a ridiculous amount of mana for a massive walking ballista. Okay. So that should beat us. Now. Vile in Skyclave Apparition. Go after Walking Ballista. Opponent going to ping our stuff down. I think this does mean that our opponent can't attack. So maybe there's still hope? All right. Yeah. I mean, if our opponent attacks, they do die. So we've managed to stonewall this Ulamog. Opponent passes. Well, we keep Vile at three. Hmm. Well, wait. Other core get plus two, plus two. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait. We play this. We equip it. We. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh no, it's four to equip, isn't it? Oh, it's so expensive. Oh, that's not great. That's not great at all. It's too expensive. Well, Maul hits you to two. Oh, if we had another mana, our Mimit Master equip would have been lethal, but the upside of Maul is it's really sweet for the free equip. The downside of Maul is it's absurdly expensive to equip afterwards. Well, all right, give her roots. Go. Are we dead? What do you have? Ponus had a million haymakers, but the core fighting the good fight, but our pony has infinite mana. They have infinite... Oh, no, my goodness. Come on now. Ages stirrings. Although certainly off the top, because our opponent didn't cast it last turn. What do they find? Oblivion Stone, Ugin just literally ends the game. Ancient Sturrings. <laughs> opponent's thinking it over. Maybe that's a good side, but it's hard to read too much into it, because our opponent's played uh, played at such a slow pace that they could have the I win card, and they're just still taking a while to, uh, to select it. Oh, one mana short. If only we had Tron. We could have equipped that Armament Master in one last turn. If they grab Ugin after all this, I'm going to be I'm going to be very disappointed. <laughs> wow. All right, it's a Chromatic Star. Well, no wonder it was taking a while. That's that's a redraw. Chromatic Star, sure. Redraws with Chromatic Star. Do they find the I Win card? Adds a green. Sylvan Scrying. Okay. Well, that's not the I win card. Radiant Fountain. Yeah. Plays Radiant Fountain. Goes up to four. Oh, they had it the whole time. Uh, Karn. Eats the Maul. So now we again don't have lethal? Ugh. Opponent. Passes. Vial stays on three. Oh, wait. Wait, wait, wait. Stoneforge. This might, this might do it. This might just do it. Stoneforge, last equipment, Shadow Sphere, cast Shadow Sphere. I think making one other creature two power actually shifts the math here. <laughs> wow! Uh, we will equip to a Stoneforge. Wah! Core! They did it! They did it! Through two cards, a walking ballista, a Ulamog exiling two of her best permanents, Core! <laughs> what are the odds? We got, like, our opponent had turned... Wow, an opponent disconnected! They did... Well, maybe they'll return, but maybe they're so embarrassed. So embarrassed about losing to Core that they're not coming back. That's also possible. It could also be that our opponent's having internet problems, and that's why they're uh, breaking the reverse land speed record on Moto uh, and, uh, and 
<laughs> and taking a long time. It might be that their internet's sketchy, so... Wow! I honestly cannot believe that. Our opponent had natural turn 3, kept 7. Natural Tron on turn 3. No tutoring or anything. Uh, multiple ancient stirrings. They whiffed a little on those. But they had Ulamog, they had two cards, and we... Walking Bliss, and we still got there. That is... Miraculous. Miraculous, I say. Uh, bad news is, we got essentially nothing for this matchup. <laughs> Very close to nothing. I think we can go down a couple of giver of runes for a couple of paths. And and that's it. I mean, we're hoping to be aggressive. That's our that's our game plan. Woo! Alright! That was interesting, for sure. I mean, we'll see if our opponent even returns. We have literally zero sideboard cards for this matchup. <laughs> I mean, I guess we technically brought in path, but our sideboard is... Very much not geared for this matchup. I still wonder if finding room for Blood Moons would be worth it. Or cleansing wildfires or something. Like, I feel like we're pretty naked against Tron or against, uh, like, Amulet Titan. But I don't know. Who knows? Maybe Cordia is so fast <laughs> that, that you can win without any hate. I guess that's what, uh, what we're hoping for, at least. Probably not likely, but opponent has not returned yet. Oh, all right, opponent's back. They made it, I think. Uh, this hand... Hmm. Do we even keep it? I think we mulligan. Well, okay, I guess this will keep. We will put a... Shadow Sphere to the bottom. Well, we'll see. I feel like last... Oh, opponent kept seven again. How do they always keep seven with Drawn? How? How? Well, we will match your Tron with an Ether Vial. Basically the same. <laughs> Cheats on mana. We're, we're good. We're good. Uh, about it. Snow-covered forest. And blows up our ether vial. Okay. Well, it means they don't have Tron yet, which is good. Uh, cavern on core. And run out a Stoneforge Mystic. Snag a... I guess Sword of Fire and Ice. Pass the turn. Uh, about it. No Tron lands, please. Ancient... Oh, no. Hmm. Okay. Okay, well, that's not a Tron land. Do they have one in hand? That is a Karn. Oh, so opponent is gonna... Oh, boy. Okay. This is, uh... This is the worst of news. Well, Arid Mesa, go. Yeah. Well, now we're back to... Our opponent casting huge things and us not being able to answer them. About it. Cracks Expedition Map. Sure. It's an Ursus power plant. Tron has officially been assembled. Well, so we know at best Karn is coming down. <laughs> and that's not a very good best case scenario. Opponent. Thinking things over. At some point, our opponent is going to have to pick up the pace. Like, I don't know if I've ever seen anyone time out with Tron, but our opponent is actually really giving it a go. We're on turn four of game two with our opponent down a game, and they're they're hitting the nine minute mark left. Kind of confused what they're thinking about since we know they have this Karn. Like they revealed it off Ancient Strike, so unsure. All right, opponent plays little Karn, takes down little Karn, gets ensnaring bridge. Well, this actually might work out for us. We get to Stoneforge in Batter Skull, Crack Arid Mesa, thin the deck. Get a Sacred Foundry tapped. Opponent plays Chromatic Sphere. Well, the bad news for opponent is we get to um, Skyclave Apparition, get rid of Ensnaring Bridge, go to Combat, kill Karn, hit our opponent. I mean, this isn't that great because we still know there's a big Karn coming, so we're still in a pretty sketchy situation. Boat it. Ancient Stirrings. Gets an Ulamog. Well, we know that's coming to Power Plant. So, thankfully, one mana short from Ulamog this turn. But they do get to Karn this turn. Yeah, this might just be unbeatable. Opponent has all his dust. Wow. What a what a hand! That is... Well, that's Tron at its, uh, at its best. Now I would like to concede, but our opponents played so slowly that I feel like we should not concede to them. If this opponent loses to time, I'm not going to feel bad about it because they have played at the most ridiculously slow pace I've ever seen. Uh, we'll play Ether Vial. 
we will play an armament master, but not, I mean, we are, we're 100% dead. We're 1,000% dead. You know what? We are just going to concede. Sure. Sure, sure, sure. I mean, we got him in game one, which is sweet, but uh, well, we'll see. We just don't have cards for this matchup. I wonder if that's deck building oversight uh, by the person that made the deck, or if Tron isn't something to worry about for land-based combo decks. I mean, I guess in all honesty, Tron is not super high up the meta at this point. Our sideboard does seem geared against, like, the Death Shadow deck, Humans, Death and Taxes. Those are the top-tier decks of the meta. And we do have a lot of cards for those matchups. Blitz. But uh, we do not have cards for random Tron players, really. All right, we're on the play. Maybe our opponent will stumble a little. They've had two... Oh, boy. We will stumble a little. Oh, sweet mother. All right, well, this hand is horrible. Is our Tron opponent keeping seven again? They're going to six. Well, I guess we keep. We put a vial to the bottom. Not a fan of this hand, though. Um, well, Aired Mesa, crack it. Snag a planes. Play an ether vial, pass the turn. Yeah, this hand's not good. Opponent, power plant, and passes. Well, take a vial. We draw. More lands. All right, well, more lands go. <laughs> oh, no. No! Opponent, do you have a trod piece? Uh, of course. Plays a trod piece. And passes. Well, vial going up to two. If only we could vial lands into play. Well, plans player advantage. Akiri, go. Does our opponent have natural trod again? Opponent. All right, so they have Tron for next turn? Sort of. Well, we gotta make hay. Wait, we got a shot. So we will Violet Stoneforge. We will get a Sword of Fire and Ice. We will untap. We will take up Vile. In case we draw removal, Outfitter. Well, we will Stoneforge in Sword of Fire and Ice. Cavern on Core. Equip Akiri. Get it. Hit you for seven. Draw two. Oh, oh! We need the we need the three drop removal core to get rid of to get rid of this expedition map. That would be huge. Come on, deck. Yes, it came off the top. Arakiri card draw. We hit it. Skyclave apparition. Whoo! Get rid of that map. Keep him off trot. Hopefully. What a draw. Akiri power. Okay. Pass the turn. There's hope. Oh, please don't top take the trod land. Please, no. No. No, no, no. Forest. Okay, that's not a tron land, but it's it's good. That is a start. We don't have lethal this turn, which is buying our opponent time. That also turns on artifact destruction, potentially. Oh. Opponent. All right. Has artifact destruction. Kills the sword of fire and ice. That does slow our clock. Three, four, five, six. Well... Vile stays on three. We draw equipment. Inspiring Vantage. Well, Sunbay Canyon. Crack it. Draw a card. More lands. Well, go to combat. Attack ya. Oh, we're flooding out at the least opportune time. Hit our opponent to seven. Run out a Outfitter for literally zero value. Pass the turn. What do they find? Oh, if they... Oh, my goodness. Is this going to go wrong again? They top deck the Chromatic Star, okay. That doesn't just beat us. Plays it. I mean, technically we're presenting lethal, right? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Forest again. Cracks it. Are we gonna win this? Are we gonna win this? Agent Stirrings. But they only have one mana. Do we get there? Do we get there against Tron? Core? <laughs> With no hate for Tron? Taking it down in the longest Tron match in history. Expedition map. And a post comes it up. Whoa, core power. Core power. I cannot believe that worked. And get, well, this game, our opponent didn't assemble Tron, thankfully. And we had a pretty fast draw. Game one, we beat natural Tron and the cards. That was, that was a performance for our deck. Good lord. Good lord, good lord. Core. <laughs> Akiri. I gotta say... 
in our little post-game breakdown, Akiri saved us. Like, the drawing two cards with Akiri and the Sword of Fire Dice, that hit us the Skyclave Apparition with our second card draw that we vialed in to get rid of the Expedition Map, which kept our opponent off Tron, which let us steal the win. Wow. All right. Sweet, sweet. Whew. All right. Much brew about nothing time. We are corn. Corn around in uh, <laughs> in modern core tribal of all things. Uh, all right. This sounds fine. Inspiring Vantage. Go. See what our opponent's doing. Conceal Courtyard. And Inquisition. All right, there goes our Stoneforge, I assume. Yeah. Well, we will Sunbake Canyon and run out the Outfitter. Go. <laughs> go, go, Grizzly Bears. We do have a decent amount of removal, though. All right, opponent, Tide Hollows. Well, we get to snag this Tide Hollow with a Skyclave Apparition and get back whatever our opponent takes. So that's not the end of the world. Takes a Curie. Opponent passing. Ooh. Well, if we ever get equipment, it's going to be sweet. Well, one, two, three. Skyclave Apparition. Snag the Tide Hollow. Get back a Curie. Hit you for two. Oh, uh, boot it. Snow covered plains. Lingering Souls. And passes. Well, one. Lingering Souls is actually kind of an issue. One, two, three. Play a Kiri. We're gonna need we're gonna need some equipment. That's what we're really missing. One, two, three, a Kiri. Inspiring Vantage. We will get in with the outfitter. If our opponent trades two for one, we're fine with that. I guess technically it's half of a lingering souls, but still. We I don't think we can beat four flyers, so this trade is like kinda reasonable for us. Opponent. Snow covered planes. Stoneforge Mystic. For Batter Skull? Gets a Batter Skull. Dark Confidant. Opponent passes. Well, I think our best bet is to Skyclave Apparition Stoneforge. Go attacking. Wow, opponent's gonna trade. Interesting. Alright, trades with the Bob. Oh, playing Spire Advantage. Pass the turn. Opponent gets back an illusion. If they have a land, they can just cast this batter skull. That is one of the weird things about the core tribe is we do kind of need we do kind of need equipment for it to be fully powered. Like without equipment, kind of awkward. Opponent thought seizes and then lingers field of ruin. It's gonna blow up Sunbait Canyon. Lingering souls. Okay. Well, come on, equipment. Skyclave apparition. Well, let's sack Sunbait Canyon. More lands. Ugh. Well, get in with a Kiri. Hit our opponent. Pass the turn. Opponent. Sort of feast and famine. Oh, this is, this is brutal. Yeah. Gets in. Hits us. Ooh, our opponent has the equipment, but we don't. That's been the problem. The thought seizes. Yeah, and now they get to batter skull two. Well, we draw... Giver of runes. Well, play Giver of runes. Might be too little too late, though. Skyclave Apparition. We gotta get rid of the sword. Ugh, yeah. We're the equipment deck, but our opponents had all the equipment. <laughs> That's been the story of this one. And I think we're just dead because... Because of this Batter Skull. So opponents just, like, Black White Stoneforge, I guess. Might have Smallpox. Goes to combat. Gets in. She. All right, block, block. Oh, this is so bad. We're supposed to be the one with the batter skull. <laughs> yeah. So Akiri dies. Batter skull. The germ dies, but batter skull can go on a spirit, which is a uh, which is an issue. Opponents back up to fourteen. Collective brutality. Dar oh my goodness, dark confidant. Yeah, we're. We're done. We draw Vile. <laughs> Vile while good on turn one. One of our worst cards on turn uh, on turn eight here. <laughs> Empty handed off the top. Well, that was unfortunate. Opponent had equipment. We did not have equipment. What do we have that's good against our opponent's deck? We can probably bring in the Nahiri. That's kind of sweet. Is Bone Crusher worth it? We don't have a good answer to Lingering Souls. Devout Lightcaster seems interesting. Bone Crusher does kill some stuff. I wonder if it could be right to take out the vials. I'm actually tempted to take out Vile here. You know what? I think I think we're going to. So it's probably the the worst idea I've ever had, but and uh go down Firewalkers. 
for Bone Crushers. And, eh, one path. Eh, let's try it. I don't know. Going down, going down the Ether Vial could very well be wrong, but... Uh, I don't know if we can afford to have dead draws. Like, it's great on turn one, but in this grindy matchup, I don't know if we can afford dead draws. Well, all right. We got equipment this time. Spiring Vantage. Shadow Sphere. Go. Mars Flats. No discard? All right. Well, uh, Arid Mesa. Crack it. Grab a Planes and Armament Master. Go. Smallpox would be pretty brutal here. Opponent Cracks. Godless Shrine, and Snow-Covered Swamp, Stoneforge Mystic. All right, so equipment are coming. Gets the Batter Skull. Well, thankfully, we do have an answer to the Stoneforge. You win a Maul. Well, play the land, run out Skyclave Apparition. Get rid of the Stoneforge, so no Batter Skull yet. Get in, hit ya. I mean, we kind of have a clock now. Opponent, down to 17. Well, we have a clock assuming Armament Master lives. It is a pretty sweet lord when it sticks around. And we get equipment on it. Snow-covered planes. All right, Lingering Souls. That is pretty okay here. Opponent passes. Um, let's maul the Skyclaves on Armament Master. Grow our Skyclave Apparition 2. Get in for eight. This is the core power. This is where the core can actually be good. Opponent gonna chump. Gonna chump. Yeah. Pass the turn. Opponent untaps. No removal. No removal. Please, no removal. <laughs> uh, boot it. I mean, Armor Master is sweet when it sticks around and gets going. Field of Ruin, yeah. Lingering Souls again, sure. Uh, boot it. Passes. Hmm. Well, I think we just... Shadow Sphere the Skyclave Apparition. Go to combat. Attack. This gives us protection from removal on Armament Master. The blowout is, we equip on here, our opponent kills this, and then also gets to kill Skyclave. All right, opponent drops to 12. Inspiring Vantage, go. All right, so opponent did have removal. Field of Ruin. Lily, oh no. Yeah, that's bad. So we lose our only creature. Opponent has a Liliana. Opponent gets another creature. There's a Batter Skull in hand. Oh, not good, not good. Not good at all. We draw more land somehow. Well, Saxon Bay Canyon. Into even more land somehow. Well, all right. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, this one, uh, this one is not went the way we were hoping. That's for sure. Opponent. Now they have a Liliana to kill our next creature, too. I feel like we need Devout Lightcaster to have any shot. Discard Cavern. Uh, put it sort of feast and famine and we will scoop it up hey well Korra did not actually get there that time that actually didn't feel very close at all huh all right well on to the next one all right much brew about a big time we are coring <laughs> of all things core tribal in modern can we play against uh mono red one time blitz let's uh let's play the blitz matchup well Planes and Shadow Sphere. Go. Uh, Putin's. Ooh, uh oh. Alright, combo. Now, well, Cavern of Souls on Core. Stoneforge. So, our opponents probably oops all spells, I would assume. Stoneforge, get Sword of Fire and Ice. Go. Oops all spells, I think more likely than Belcher, but with the with the black mana. Alright, Shatter Skull. Or, Amiria's Call. Shatter Skyclave. We draw a bolt. Well, past the turd. We're giving our opponent infinity to go off here. Untaps. Agadim. Untapped. Under City Informant. Well, okay, so we could be dead. All right, Simeon Spirit Guide. And that does it. Well, we'll see the combo this time. Under City Informer. Sacrifices. Mills the entire deck. We get to look at the cards. The deck includes two Creeping Chills. And a Narco Amoeba. And Sword of the Meek. Okay. And how do we die? Discards to get back Phantasmagorian. Gets back Salvage Titan. Cast Salvage Titan. Gets four Venge Vines. Opponent combat attacks. Well, so we got to put Batter Skull into play. Does any of this actually matter, though? So we block. 
We go to six. I think we're still just dead next turn without a top. Mm hmm. Chump, chump. So we're still just dead, right? So we block here, we block here, we bolt here. We have to take one to bolt, though. All right. So they got us. Just barely, but they did get us. Well, yeah, that's a, that's a turn three kill. Good news is we actually do have some sideboard cards for this, including three graveyard hate spells. Actually, exclusively three graveyard hate spells. So bring in three graveyard hate spells. We will mulligan aggressively for them. We'll go down Giver of Runes, which I don't think our opponent has interaction. And yeah, I guess that's it. All right. Can we, can we mulligan into graveyard hate? And can our opponent mulligan into an answer to graveyard hate? That is all that really matters. All right, so we get to play first. Graveyard hate, please. Well, all right, we got to rest in peace. Otherwise, this hand's not exciting, but rest in peace is, is very good. <laughs> Save us, Lucy. Save us, Lucy. This is two mana graveyard hate, so if our opponent has thought sees, that is an issue. All right, opponent aggressively mulliganing. Well, Sacred Foundry tapped. Go. Do they have the discard spell? Or another way of beating Rest in Peace. Amiria. Untapped. Simeon Spirit Guide. Pentad Prism. Passes. Well, all right. Planes and Rest in Peace. Go. So our opponent's got to deal with that before they combo. Seagate Reborn. Untapped. Wow. They sideboarded into Belcher. Uh, Skyclave? Please, removal? Stoneforge. Well, I mean, I guess that's game. Stoneforge. Take a Sword of Fire Nice. Play the land. Play Ether Vial. Pass the turd. Yeah, I mean, good sideboard plan from our opponent. Got a mana. There's the land. Untapped. Activates Belcher. No lads. And we're dead. Now, let's look at their deck. I'm genuinely curious. Yeah, so they're just... They're just playing all the combos and hoping to hit the right one. Well, it worked that time. All right, much brew about nothing time. We are janky tribing this week in modern. Uh, core, <laughs> core tribal, <laughs> which uh, which I think is roughly Kithkin level. Probably, I mean, it's got to be. It's got to be pretty close to Kithkin. I mean, you get Stoneforge, but really, it's uh, it's roughly Kithkin dot deck. Ooh, all right. This might finally be the matchup we are waiting for, which is one where our main deck core firewalkers get to punish our opponent. Hopefully. Hopefully it's just some sort of like burn or prowess deck where this firewalker is absurd. About it. Cracks. Arid Mesa. Uh, Blood Crypt. Okay, so not necessarily. Okay, it's Jund. So that means not necessarily absurd. Oh, it's Dredge. Oh, dear. Okay. So not not a matchup where core firewalker is absurd opponent creeping chills us gets still silver smotes and uh also some prized amalgams and we will play a stoneforge mystic but i think this one's already over opponent can get back ox one two well maybe they can't but i do think this one's just over already yeah well that's what dredge does if there's not graveyard hate dredge is the be one of the best decks in the format probably the best deck in the format Oh, I am a little disappointed that the matchups where our deck is supposed to be good are all over the place, but uh, we just, we haven't been hitting them. Like, a lot of the, the top decks in Modern at the moment are decks where our deck should be very strong. Oh, God almighty. Whew. Well, this is also just, this is also just an insane dredge hand. Win the die roll, win on turn three, double cathartic reunion, so, yeah, all right. Well... Now we play the mulligan for graveyard hate game. Uh, so we'll bring in all the graveyard hate, of course. We will go down Giver of Runes. We will go up two Forge Tenders. We'll go down a couple of Lightning Bolts. And, yeah, I guess that's it. All right, all right, all right. Well, now we mulligan for graveyard hate. Our opponent mulligans for an answer to graveyard hate. And we see who, who mulligans more fortunately uh well this is a good hand but no graveyard hate so we can't keep it because we're up against dredge all right this hand has graveyard hate so we will keep it we will put a batter skull to the bottom and now the question is does our opponent have an answer to our graveyard hate because if they do then none of this matters anyway well ether vial go opponent arid mesa uh, okay this isn't great cracks it stomping grounds untapped and blows it wow okay 
So I'm guessing that means our opponent has multiple forms of graveyard hate. Because spending a nature's claim on a ether vial seems incredibly greedy. Opponent passes. Well, inspiring vantage. Ikiri. Go. Opponent cracks. Blood crypt tapped. Wow, maybe our opponent just greeted themselves into trouble here. That was an aggressive nature's claim if they didn't have a backup. Cracks. Is it time to start hard casting dredge threats? Cathartic reunion. Digging for graveyard hay and a shriekorn. All right. Well, once our opponent finds finds an answer to graveyard hate, they're pretty well set up. Get in, hit ya. Down to 12. Opponent. All right. Does find the answer. Well, now they're off to the races. Mills themselves. Hits a stinkweed. City of brass. Plays a stinkweed. Can we find more graveyard hate? We find another Akiri somehow. Well, equip. Go to combat. Attack. Draw a card. Well, yeah. Uh, but now our... I mean... Yeah? I think our opponent played poorly but were, was rewarded. Which uh, is a little disappointing. I mean, that's... That's how this matchup goes. And they get to Ox and dredge their entire deck. And that's the game. Well... Uh, not much not much else to say about this one, honestly. <laughs> not really anything to say at all. Ox, Poet gets to discard a bunch of dredgers. They get to dredge a bunch. They get a Narc Amoeba to get back a prize to Meldum. They get another Ox. They get a Conflagrate and an Ancient Grudge. So, yeah, I mean... Yeah, I'm, I'm a little disappointed. <laughs> In all honesty... Uh, just because our opponent decided to... Our opponent decided to spend their answer to a graveyard hate on an ether vial that really didn't matter, and they ended up being, uh, being rewarded for it. But this one's over now. All right. Fair enough. All right. Much ado about nothing time. We are coring? Core tribal? Oh, no. No lands, no keep. Ugh, ugh. We can't catch a break with the core. All right. Uh, yeah, 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 we'll keep this. We'll put a Sacred Foundry to the bottom. Well, we'll see. This hand is not overflowing with action by any means. Land go. Pony is probably a Death Shadow deck, I would assume. Seeing Luris there, but it could be other things. There are other Luris decks. Pony, Mishra's Bobble. If our opponent has Thought Seize, we have just nothing. Nothing going on. Nothing at all. Pony cracks. Ooh, Sacred Foundry, okay. Show us a core Firewalker, please, Magic Gods. Giver of Runes. Draws a co- Oh, it might be hammer time. Well, Aired Mesa. Crack it. Get a mountain. Stoneforge. Get a... Hmm. Yeah, probably just batter a skull to start. Pass the turn. No attacks. With Giver, we should be able to protect Stoneforge and put batter a skull into play. Opponent. And then at some point, we're going to have to kill this Giver. All right, more Givers. Opponent. Ooh, stuck on one land. All right. Hmm. Hmm, 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 Well, yeah, let's, let's put Batter's Skull into play. Uh, boot it. Snow-covered planes. Well, Batter's Skull time. Opponent's going to bolt the giver. Yeah. Well, there's a Batter's Skull. Go to combat. Get in with the germ. Opponent blocks. Protex. Yeah. Well, now we got to start slogging through these givers. Skyclave Apparition. Get rid of the giver. Inspiring Vantage. Go. Uh, opponent scoops it up. Okay. Well, we didn't go super off, but I don't, I'm still not sure what our opponent's doing. Honestly, <laughs> we saw a bolt and two giver of roots. Uh, well, hmm. Hammer time is still my best guess. Kind of tempted to go down vials for removal. Firewalker actually seems good. Bone crusher also seems good. Yeah, let's bone crusher. And you know what? We're gonna we're gonna cut vials. I'm still like I don't know. I don't know if this plan is actually correct or not, but I think it's fine. Hopefully, I almost wonder if this deck would be better without vial. Period. <laughs> like I I have not been super impressed with vial in this deck. Maybe it's just the way we've run with the deck could be part of it, but it hasn't been all that impressive to me. In all honesty, all right. We are on the draw for game number two. Hmm. Ha. Huh. Boy, it sounds good if we hit lands. Which is risky. 
Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna mulligan. Batter Skull's kind of a mulligan anyway. All right, this is better. We can put Batter Skull to the bottom. Little awkward with no red mana, but Core Firewalker seems like it could actually be decent in this matchup. All right, Aaron Maze opponent cracks it. Oh, so they okay? Maybe they are Death Shadow, and they were just color screwed. That is also possible. So Bobble cracked. Well, um, Cavern on Core and Giver Rooms. Go. Uh, put it. Are we killing the Giver? All right, Fatal Push on Giver. Sure. Sudden Baked Canyon. Opponent passes. Well, Plains and hmm, Stoneforge. Grab a. Huh. Yeah, we'll take Batter Skull Steel. I'm a little worried if they just have another removal spell. We might be stuck with this in hand for a long time, but how much removal can they have? All right, they have Dismember. So this is Death Shadow. All right, and Bolts. So opponent, okay. Hmm. Yeah, we might be in trouble now. Bloodstained Mire. There's the Scourge. Yeah, we didn't sideboard with this in mind. Well, Cavern on Core. Play... Firewalker, play Giver of Runes. Yeah, we definitely did not sideboard. We sideboarded for some reason as if our opponent was Hammer Time, rather than a Scourge of the Skyclaves deck. So that's on that's on us. Godless Shrine tapped. We are a, a million years away from casting a Bone Crusher. Opponent combat. Well, unfortunately, we got to take it. Yeah. Uh, down to 14 grows the scourge uh, opponent if giver lives we can start blocking and protecting hopefully and grass rampage uh, we'll gain a life and set core firewalker and ooh, opponent also has giver all right red mana please armament master hmm super awkward well we will armament master the problem is our opponent can use this giver to give their scourge protection so we can't block oh these double caverns with our sideboard bone crusher is actually pretty awkward we just we can't we can't kill the the giver opponent thought seizes well okay i assume they take the bone crusher oh we're gonna die super quick while well, they don't interesting protection well we get i think one turn to kill giver opponent gets and hits us down to 10, grows it to a 10-10. Well, yeah, we got we to gotta draw the removal spell here. Oh, my God, they have another one. Oh, just kidding. We're super dead. All right. We draw the red source. So we kill this, but then we're still in chump block. Well, all right. We draw the red source. We can bone crusher or stomp on, stomp on Giver of Runes. Core Outfitter. I think we're just too late, though. Pass the turn. Opponent attacks so we block block protect armament master stay at 10 temporarily uh oh they drew something else okay they're gonna get Luris down to five is there any way we can just jank them out maul we need maul the skyclaves off the top akiri all right let's think about this so Luris is coming that can recast giver of runes well we will Bone Crusher Giant. Hit our opponent. So I think our out is... Our out is Lightning Bolt off the top. Or Maul the Skyclaves, potentially. Opponent goes to combat. Attacks, attacks. We block. We block. Protect Bone Crusher. Well, this is it. This is it. We need the top deck, and we need it this exact turn. Opponent can lure us and give her... Lure us. All right, now Stomp does it too. Come on, deck. Come on, deck. Oh, 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 oh. That is also on the approved list. Skyclave Apparition. Hit the Lurus. Go to combat and kill ya. Core coming through in the end. Oh, what a weird, weird, weird league with this deck. There was definitely good news. There was definitely bad news. Uh, as far as our league, we end with a 2-3, and three, which, I mean, obviously would have liked to win more than that, but we got to see the good of the deck, along with some of the bad of the deck. Interesting. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Huh. I mean, out of our losses, I guess this is more wrap-up stuff, but out of our losses, two of them were to 
or to just degenerate graveyard decks, oops all spells, and dredge. One of them, disappointingly, uh, through our graveyard hate even. Actually, both of them through our graveyard hate. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, that's modern for you, but I feel like we got to see the good of it in that matchup, but we even missideboarded. If we had known that our opponent was actually that shadow deck, these devout lightcaster uh, are insane. Like, those are our, that's our core tech for that matchup in specific. Uh, we didn't realize that's what they were doing, but we could have brought in passing devout lightcasters. And we still managed to win without them, thanks to uh, to core power. So, yeah, all right, sweet, sweet. Huh. Well, be back with the wrap-up. So, what did we learn this week about core tribal and modern? And overall, we finished 2 and 3. We started off good with a really weird, insane win over Trod. We ended good with a win over Death Shadow. In between, we lost to the black-white dead guy ale that just kind of got out equipment, which is really strange because we're the equipment tribe. And then we played Oops All Spell and Dredge, two just degenerate graveyard decks where we even mulliganed into our graveyard hate game two after getting absolutely crushed in game one, but our opponent had the answers. Our Oops All Spell play, uh, opponent actually had Goblin Charbelcher as a backup plan, which got us our dredge opponent after throwing away a removal spell for recipes on a useless ether vial drew into another one dredged off and beat us so i feel like two or three obviously no we're hoping for we'd like to get three or two we'd like to get five oh really but we'd like to get a little bit better than two and three on the other hand, I feel like these matchups were not great for our deck. If you look at our deck, we had all those core firewalkers. We got all this pro black stuff. I feel like this is a deck that it's designed to beat up on like the blitz deck. It's designed to do well against the death and taxes deck. It's designed to do well against the death shadow decks, which are decks that are at the top of the meta. Like those are the decks that we're really targeting. Uh, those are the decks where we could really shine. And I can see how Guardian Shield would go five with this deck. I think if you hit those matchups, which admittedly are at the top of the meta, they're some of the most popular decks right now, I could definitely see this deck crushing it. On the other hand, it didn't really feel like we had the tools to compete with Tron, even though we did win somehow, which was kind of mind-blowing, because we don't have Blood Moons, we don't have Land Destruction, we just kind of fought through our opponent having three times as much mana than us, and then against, like, the Degenerate decks, we're just not, like, super fast. We're fast ish sort of with our best draws but we're not gonna race dredge we're not gonna race oops all spells we're mostly hoping that we can mulligan to our graveyard and get work so i feel like we hit relatively poor matchups if instead of like oops all spell and dredge we played like death and taxes and mono red blitz or bird i think then you're looking at a much much better record so keep that in mind even though a two three record is not insane i feel like the matchups were not the matchups we were really hoping to play with the deck as far as the deck itself though I mean, it's definitely sweet, it's weird, and the creatures are a little bit underpowered, but I was impressed with some of the synergies. Like, Akiri is a really strong card. Akiri is very, very good. Skyclave Apparition is insane. Like, people are waking up to how good it is, and it might still be underrated in modern. It's just such a great removal spell in a deck like this. Uh, Armament Master does things sometimes. Core Outfitter can get our opponent by surprise, like re-equipping a batter's call or something. So we do have some weaker creatures in the deck. And I feel like, I don't know, maybe the sideboard could use some work. I feel like the sideboard was definitely not ideal for the matchups we played. Whether or not that means anything, or if we just played weird matchups, it's really hard to say. Like I said, if we played other matchups, I think it would have went much better. So I Core Tribal, it's better than I thought. I think when I heard Core Tribal, I actually kind of laughed to myself, like, there's no way, no way Core Tribal is actually, like, semi-competitive in Modern. And I think Core Tribal it is semi-competitive in Modern. It's got good matchups, it's got bad matchups, the unfair matchups are really, really tough, which we saw in our league today. But the other matchups, the deck performs really well, it's got sweet new additions, it's got equipment synergies, it draws cards, it does fun things, so I like the deck. I mean, obviously I wish I record was a little better but the deck was sweet it was better than i thought and i think if you just took the same exact deck ran it through another league and hit a different set of matchups i could easily see it going four and one or something like it does have a lot of power it's got sweet tricks it's got tribal synergies it's got a unique pseudo lord so that's core tribal 
I mean, it's a thing ish, sort of, in modern. And uh, that's been our much approved for this week. So, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And I will talk to you soon. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, help us out by clicking that like button down below. And to keep up on all the latest and greatest, click that subscribe button. And don't forget to hit that bell icon to get alerts whenever we have new videos. And if you want to, check out some of our other sweet videos here and here.